have a seat. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming to Mechanicsville to worship with us. I'm going to ask you, if you haven't already, to come on in and get settled. We're going to uh, open up with an old hymn. I've found a song that could be kind of dry and slow, or it could be kind of uh, jazzed up a little bit. So that's what we're going to try to do. Will you stand? something like if you can if you're physically able can you smile as a two <laughs> two one two one <coughs> mm. the just a closer walk with me Thank y'all. Y'all can be seated. Who got the announcement? I ain't got none. If you will just direct your attention to your bulletin, everything you need to know should be in here. Um, th first of all, thank you all for joining us this morning for worship. Um, we are so glad to see your smiling faces. 
Um, most of the information um, you need is towards the back. We have Operation Christmas Child. Um, I know that Susie did like a family challenge for each family to pack one box. Um, those boxes will be due on November 13th, I believe. And um, each boss, box costs $10 if you could, um, or the shipping, excuse me, if you could provide that $10 shipping with the boxes you pack, it would be appreciated. But next Sunday at 5, a week from today, we're going to have a packing party. And those are a lot of fun if you've never come before. Um, there are tables set up with different things that you can put in your box. Um, and we just keep packing until the supplies are gone. Um, and if you feel led to uh, donate some pack, uh, shipping money for those boxes, that is greatly appreciated as well. Um, the Christmas prison packets, we're collecting items for those. The packing list is there um, in your bulletin. Uh, we would appreciate if you could donate any items for those. Um, to the, uh, we'll be delivering them to our local jails, but um, believe it or not, those items mean a lot um, to the gentlemen and ladies that they're delivered to. Um, if you think about, you know, they normally don't get things, something as simple as their own toothbrush and toothpaste can go a long way. So if you would pray over donating um, things for your prison packets. Um, we have event t-shirts for sale. I don't know if you've seen those. Um, a lot of people wore them to our Harvest Festival. Allie's got his on, I see it. They're really sharp. If you want to see one in real life, check him out after the service. Um, but it's nice for us to have those if we have a church event or if we're out um, representing our church somewhere. If we all have the shirt on, that way if somebody needs to know where a restroom is at the Fall Festival or Fourth of July, they'll know who to ask. So those are $10, um, and Susie has those if you're interested in purchasing one. Uh, let's see, Coots is meeting tomorrow morning. At 7 a.m., the fish camp on the corner. Come for some delicious breakfast and fellowship. Um, they usually have a great speaker for that, um, and it's just a good time for the men of our community to come. Um, this Saturday at 8, we're having a men's prayer breakfast. Ladies, we need to get some stuff for us. Um, <laughs> men's prayer breakfast It's going to be in the fellowship hall across the street at the chapel. So, um you know, again, drum up some of the men, your neighbors, and bring them across the street this sun, or Saturday at 8 for a good breakfast and fellowship. Uh, the youth are selling car wash tickets, $10 a ticket. That's a wonderful fundraiser for them. Um, and the students that sell them kind of get, like, money in their bank uh, to enjoy things that the youth do um, together, trips and things. Grace Moments is this Thursday at 6. Ladies, if you've never been... Um, try and find a babysitter or just pencil in some time to come enjoy that time together. It's just a, a nice refreshing night where we get together, enjoy some good food and fellowship. Um, Susie and Renee always have something nice um, to just kind of help carry us through the rest of the week. Um, and then Wednesday evening, we're going to have soup night this Wednesday. Hopefully the weather will um, change a little bit and be cooler for us to enjoy soup. Um, there is a sign up in the hall if you would sign up so we know how many to expect. Um, but we will have uh, supper starting at 6 and then our classes start at 6.30 and we would love to see you there. Um, on the back you'll see birthdays and anniversaries. Happy birthday Mr. Jimmy, Miss Crystal who is really going to bless y'all today with a duet. Um, Jimmy Kelly, Birch Skinner, and then we have um, an anniversary, Garth and Jessica Benoit. So happy birthday and anniversary to y'all. Um, church council meeting is November 17th. The Thanksgiving service and meal is the 20th. Please join us for that. Um, and there is a community prayer breakfast at the Country Club on the 30th towards the end of the month. So just mark your calendar. Oh, and our adult Christmas party December 9th. Those are a lot of fun if you've never been. Um, jot those down in your calendar. Make time to meet us there. And then um, also shadow of the steeple ministry is Brent and Malin Benoit. If you would just reach out to them um, and let them know that their church family is thinking about them and praying for them. Um, a handwritten card goes a long way. So um, if you could just, even if it's on a little piece of paper, slip something in the mail and let them know that we're praying for them. Um, thank you for your time and let's get back to worship. Deacon, come and lead us in prayer, please.
morning. Um, before I pray, put your arm. This is the shirt she was talking about. Um, it's a good looking shirt, Mechanicsville Baptist Church. And when you wear it, invite somebody to church. Allie, Allie does a good job. He does a better job than me and his mama do. But when you wear that shirt, be proud to wear it. Let people know where you go. Um, we went to the Sweet Potato Festival yesterday. Tracy had hers on. People stop and look at it. And like I said, Allie, that's one thing I can say about him. He will never fail to invite people to church. And Pastor Frankie can <laughs> go for that. Can you stay here? You sit down. Thank you, Allie. Well, good morning. Um, any unspoken prayer request, let it be shown by lift of hands. Thank you. We go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us another day to come worship with you. Lord, thank you for not only giving us the ability to go out and put shirts on our bodies that show where we go to church, but put smiles on our faces and put the attitudes in our hearts, Lord, so when we go out, people can see that not only do we go to church, that we represent you too, Lord. Um, the shirt don't mean nothing, Lord, if you're out there doing something bad or if you but Lord, thank you for giving us this. Lord, please look over the people who have unspoken prayer requests. Lord, you know what their needs are. Lord, I have some friends going through some difficult times. Lord, please be in prayer with them. Um, look out for them this, at this time. And Lord, a special thing to me, Lord, is the people who are getting ready to enter the holiday seasons for the first time without the presence of their loved ones. Lord, please look after these people and let us be able to help them any way you can. Yeah, thank you for all you've done for us, Lord. Amen. Amen. Ushers, will you please come forward?
felt like we needed to sing a little bit of that in honor of Thanksgiving. Amen. It ain't all about the turkey, you know. It's about being thankful. We got another corporate worship song. I learned that from Bailey Headley. I didn't know what corporate worship was until I met her, but she educated me. I love learning new stuff. Y'all know this song? No, not that one. Not that one. Blessed be your name. They gonna do that one. Yeah, that's right. There we go. Y'all know this song? Blessed be your name. How about stand up and sing it with us if you do? was good there. I like that. I felt a little something then. What you got? Y'all got something? Is this corporate or is this quartet? Corporate. This it's is corporate. You guys stay standing. It's We're corporate. We're worshiping together this morning.
Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for the chance that we get to come here and be a part of a part of your church, God. And as we take our seats, I just pray that, Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. We know that eternity is waiting to see its church alive again. And Father, eternity just wants us to agree, to agree. And so, Father, I pray this morning that we just agree with heaven, that you would meet us here in this place. Father, that you would show out in a mighty way today, that you would touch our hearts. It says in your word that you look for a broken and contrite heart. And so, God, I just pray this morning that you would break our hearts for you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bailey. Um, this young lady here is turning 39 tomorrow, I think. I lost count. But yeah. Um, yeah, you did. Out of all my third cousins once removed, this one is closest to me at the moment. No, I love this girl. She's a, she's a great talent and a great, a great child of God. And we're going to try to sing a duet. It's called Who You Are to Me. Some people think you're distant, just some words upon a page. You're nothing more than fables handed down along the way. But I've seen you part the waters where no one else could pull me from the deep. It's who you are to me. Some people think you're just a in cathedrals made of stone. But I know you live inside my heart. I know that it's your home. And I've seen you in a sunset and in the eyes of a stranger on the street. It's who you are to me. You're amazing, faithful, love's open door. When I'm empty, you fill me, hunger for more. Your mercy, your goodness, Lord, you're the air that I breathe. That's who Sometimes I have my doubts, know that everybody does. And I wonder when I stumble, am I still worthy of your love? I know that I get stronger when I'm talking to you down on my knees. You're everything I need. You're amazing, faithful, love's open door. When I'm empty, you fill me, hunger for more. Your mercy, your goodness, Lord, you're the air that I breathe. That's who you are to me. You're forever holy. You're the Lamb who is worthy. My forgiveness, my healer, the Messiah. kids no sitting on the couch Pastor Darrell's going to explain why the couch is not a good place some of them think they're too big to come up here there they come all right 
Everybody had a good week. Pastor Darrell's going to really explain the couch. Can't sit on the couch, Isaac. No, 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 no. All right. So, you see, can't get on the couch, Liza. Couch is a bad place. I know it's tempting, trust me. It's even more tempting when Pastor Daryl preaches about it today. We get lazy. We like to sit on the couch. Yeah. All right. How's everybody? Good? Good. So today, um, Pastor Daryl is preaching about gratitude and being thankful. And sometimes it's hard to be thankful, right, when we're going through tough times and, and things aren't always going our way or, or whenever we have things that are going on that maybe we shouldn't be doing and we're trying to get rid of that bad habit, or maybe it's school. How many of you struggle with math? Liza, you don't like math? You hate it. Wow. So you don't like math, and it's tough. And what would be the easiest thing to do, Liza? Quit school? Would that be the easiest thing? You like culture? Well, what, what about math? What you going to do about math? You got to have math. But would it be, you'll still do it? That's right. You'll still do it, even though it's tough and you don't like it, you're going to still do it, right? That's a tough decision to make. Well, let's look at, um, let's look at our, let, well, I'm going to let you read our verse. Yes. Okay? 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 10. We are hard pressured on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Thank you. Awesome reading. So let me ask you this. Do you think when Jesus came to this earth and died on the cross that that was easy? No. What could he have chosen to do? He could have chosen to not do what he was supposed to, right? What was he supposed to do? Die on the cross for our sins. And God has a plan for all you guys. And sometimes that plan may be tough, and it may require that you do things that you really don't want to do because it makes you uncomfortable. And the easiest thing to do would be to jump up on the, the couch and not do them. But instead... If you do what God is asking you to do, you'll see a blessing from it. Just as we, we are blessed now because Jesus chose to die on the cross for our sins. Think about this. How many of you have seen things made out of metal and, and iron and steel? Did you know? Well, did you know this? In order to, to, to bend and to make a, a sword, they have to take that metal and they have to heat it up. And they have to put pressure on it. And when they heat it up and put pressure on it, they start to mold it into what it's meant to be. And so what? what just, just like us, that's right. We have to go through tough times and we have to be pressure put on us and sometimes a little heat behind us, maybe even on our behind. But we're going to get some heat and some pressure and all of a sudden we're going to, if we will let God work with us, He'll mold us into who he wants us to be. And so today I want y'all to, to think about that. I want you to think about, is God, am I allowing God to mold me into who he wants me to be? By going through those hard times, not avoiding them, not just jumping on the couch and giving up when it's hard, but to continue on even when we have things that aren't always going our way. Like your teacher. That's right. You got to deal with her, right? Can't throw her out. Can't find another one. Can't fire her. We don't have any more teachers out there. But she's so mean. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. Love on her. Tell her you love her. And Jesus loves her. She always has to say, tell her you love math and science and Gamecocks. But I hate Gamecocks. We won't even go there this morning. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, 
let's pray. Dear God, thank you once again to come into your presence, Lord. Thank you for this season of thanksgiving, Lord. <clears throat> thank you for that cross as a reminder of your love for us. Thank you for your son, Jesus, Lord. Thank you for giving us all the things that we need, Lord. In this season, Lord, help us to be grateful, Lord, for what you have done for us, what you have given us, Lord. Give us a, see, give us a heart of gratitude, Lord. Once again, we uphold Pastor Daryl into your hands. Be with him as he delivers the sermon. Be with us as we go into the children's church and help us to learn your word. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. All right. As our children leave, if you have your Bibles, uh, there is a typo in our bulletin. If you would, turn to 2 Samuel chapter 7, not 17. Chapter 7. And we are looking at verses 18 through 24. 18 through 24. Once you've found your spot, if you're able, if you don't mind, please stand for the reading of God's word. says, Then King David went in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house that you have brought me this far? And yet this was a small thing in your sight. O Lord God, and you have also spoken of your servant's house for a great while to come. Is this the manner of man, O Lord God? Now, that more, more can they, now what more can David say to you? For you, Lord God, know your servant, for your word's sake, and according to your own heart, you have done all these great things to make your servant know them. Therefore, you are great, O Lord God, for there is none like you, nor is there any God beside you, Accor according to all that we have heard with our ears. And who is like your people, like Israel, the one nation on the earth of whom God went to redeem for himself as a people to make for himself a name and to do for yourself great and awesome deeds for your land before your people whom you redeemed for yourself from Egypt, the nations and their gods. For you have made your people Israel your very own people forever, and you Lord, have become their God. Before you sit down, I don't have my mic, so I'll use this one. How many of y'all are grateful? Excited? Hold your Bibles up. If you don't have a Bible, hold your hand up. Thank you, Jesus, for Thanksgiving month. Lord God, teach us to be grateful. Lord God, teach us to be focused on all the good. May we share the light. Teach us, God, to have a spirit of gratefulness and that we're better together with such energy. And I ask this, Jesus Christ, in your most powerful name. Amen. You may be seated. It's been a wonderful last number of months. One thing that I've been studying this week is, is gratefulness from a psychology viewpoint. And it's very clear that studies show, and I can show you the research, that those that have an outlook of gratefulness are healthier human beings, physically, emotionally. They're more able to deal with stresses in their life. They're less likely to fall into deeper depression because they look at life with an attitude of gratitude. They can see all the good and thankful they are for it. This whole month I challenge you to have gratitude in all things. I was sitting out last night and watching the deer stand, or in the deer stand, had a little old buck come up. He thought he was tough. He's all by himself. Part of me could have said, I wish it was a big old buck. But you know how that would have ended. I'd have missed him. He'd run off, and then I'd really been upset. But I just sat there for 45 minutes watching that guy strut. I'm like, I'll see you in a couple years. I was so thankful. Took a picture of him. I'm so thankful. So much 
in the last few months and see, you know, went through a couple hard years and now so much good going on. You know, a few months ago, things started getting added back. You know, Wednesday night, the dinners, there was um, 10 tables out and about everyone was mostly full Wednesday night. And then, yes, some staying here in the adults, but they're going in many directions and a lot of God's good is being done. I just so grat it. It's just grateful for what I see. It is so encouraging. Thursday morning is to get up at five and be here by six for prayer time. Oh, the group of men. Oh, I'm so thankful for that. We've got so much to be thankful for. For the last few months, how many of y'all are counting all your blessings? What is it, Friday night? Young adults? They're graceful. They invited me. <laughs> Go make my special meal. I've asked them to be graceful with me the last few months. Um, I was trying to slow down, and, and then now um, they gained a lot of strength and energy, and I can't wait to be there. I'm grateful for their grace. How about you? Have people showed you grace recently? Are you grateful? Are you saying? Are you articulating? Look at the verse that Stanley, we are hard pressed, but not crushed. The grateful person says, I'm not crushed. This would have crushed the average man. And it did, but not me. Because I'm hard pressed, but I'm not crushed because I got Jesus Christ. Amen? How you look at life often leads you down a road. I'm perplexed. But not in despair. I'll articulate, I'm not in despair. The world's in despair, but not me. We got so much to be grateful. Persecuted, but I'm not forsaken. Struck down, but I'm going to articulate, I'm not destroyed. Which are you articulating? Those things that are happening against you? Are all the things that are happening for you that are holding you up you don't even know yet. I did a little study deeper, as I mentioned. And are we really ministering to ourselves? Love God with all your heart and your mind and your soul and love others as yourself. Are you loving yourself? Are you doing what it takes to be healthy. In this article, which I found fantastic, I read a few. A, a well-studied research on Mental Health um, Institute, Hudson. Just having an attitude of gratitude makes you happy. People who express gratitude in their family, to their spouses, to their friends, when they're speaking to themselves, we all know you do it. When you speak words of gratitude and all the things that are good, you're mentally healthier. It changes your brain. Studies have shown those that continuously speak gratitude, love others, yes, but love yourself. Speak words of gratitude. It changes your serotonin levels. It makes a difference inside of you. It reduces stress reduces depression, reduces anxiety. Many people keep a journal. What's your journal look like? Does your journal talk about all the things that are hard-pressed? All the things that God kept you from being crushed under? As we start our Thanksgiving sermon series, I want you to look at life a little differently. Maybe you're already there. I have noticed when those that look at life with gratitude, the lives around them are happier. Anybody say amen? Because you're the light that lifts them up. You make a difference. When you make a difference and you're the light of gratitude and thankfulness, they're attracted and want more of that because they have stresses as it is. And next thing you know, they're going to have gratitude because they get to be around you where the opposite can so easily happen. 
as Christians, the Bible says here, carrying around the body of the dying Jesus Christ. So he'll be magnified. This series is from the cross to the couch, being grateful. There are times in our life that we get to sit back on the couch. Anybody say amen? I'm not saying it's sin. But if that's the only time you're grateful, then it's sin. Anybody say amen? Can we be grateful when life is comfortable? Absolutely. Who can't? But a lot of times our lives are somewhere between the cross and the couch. The couch represents comfortable life. Everything's going well. And if we only want the couch, we're going to avoid anything that's stressful and anything that's not comfortable. And that's why a lot of people have walked away from a lot of God-centered causes because it takes sweat and tears and sometimes some blood to accomplish God's will. Amen? The cross represents, obviously, Jesus Christ and his suffering on the cross. And he said, if there's any other way. But the first thing with the uh, attitude of gratitude is when God says no, to have a gratitude that God's got a bigger plan that you don't see. If there's any other way, Father, but nevertheless, thy will be done. And Jesus self-denied and died on the cross that we could have eternal life. He showed what it meant to be sacrificial. He didn't choose the couch. In fact, he didn't have one. So what is your cross? Maybe it's denied prayer. The cross is suffering. The cross is self-denial. Maybe your crisis, your cross is you, you've been praying and praying for something, and the Lord said no, or he said not yet. It's so easy to be upset and think God doesn't love you. But why not say God loves him so much? He's carrying me through this. He's got a better plan. His no is going to be a positive yes. I just haven't seen it yet. God is amazing. Maybe your cross is suffering you have in your life. You're going through right now. And how you carry that cross makes a difference. Because the world's looking at you. And they're going to watch how you suffer. And will you suffer like Christ suffered? Or will you be just like them? Will you show them that Christ in you is greater than the suffering that's going on to you? And even in suffering, you can praise God. And you can just start articulating. And you can make a difference. And they are so surprised. In your suffering, you're their encouragement. They're going to want more of what you got. So our series is from the cross to the couch, no matter what your circumstance, to be grateful and find good and thank God. I pray it's going to be challenging. There's a different message that during Thursday morning, Frankie, you let the Lord developed each of them bigger. And as I wrote them down, if you remember, I asked for paper. So I pray it blesses your heart. I want to give you a little background that you can see God often through our suffering is developing us. Are you available to be developed into the character that God wants you to be to make a difference in this world? King David. It must have been so comfortable with him in 1 Samuel. And I purposely left this out of y'all so we wouldn't have too much going at you. But just quick history. For Samuel 16, Samuel took him and anointed him to be king. That must have been very comfortable. Saul is king, but David, the shepherd boy, is in the field. He's protecting the sheep. He's at work. You're the king. I'm the king. Yeah, but what he wasn't told, it won't be 15 years. It will be 15 years later till he's going to be comfortable as the king. But you're the king. What happened right away? The uncomfortable. There's this man called Goliath, and he's sitting there, and he's harassing the Christians. Or excuse me, the Israelites at, at that time Christianity came out of. All the Israelites, they are afraid to go down and face the Goliath. 
It must have been very uncomfortable for the man anointed as king but not set as king yet in man's eyes to go down there. It must have been very uncomfortable to give an, a man's sword and you can't hold it. And you say, no, I'll take my sling. It must have been very uncomfortable to look at the eyes of your enemy and know you've got a battle on your hand. But David chose God's will and says, I come at you in the name of the Lord my God. He must have been very comfortable when he came back and presented Saul, the head of Goliath, as the victor. But that changed immediately because Saul was jealous. Everybody turned to David and said, David killed so many more. David is the victor. And everybody's praising David. And Saul is now envious. It must have been very in, um, uncomfortable when Saul looked at David with envy and hatred. And from that point forward, saw the way to kill him. It must have been very uncomfortable for David that he couldn't even go back to his own sheep to watch. Because Saul tried to kill him in his presence. And the sword missed him or the spear. And he ran off. Must have been very uncomfortable for year after year after year running in the caves and hiding in the wilderness. David, through the Psalms, he tells us he struggled with depression and anxiety and uncertainty through that whole time, and he cried out to God. What I'm saying is from the day that David was anointed as king, stood up when nobody else would stood up, what he got in return was the hatred of mankind, mainly coming from Saul. And spent the next 15 years of his life on the run. And at the end of that time is where we'll pick up. David's character is developed. He knows what it's like to be troubled, to have anxiety, to have fear and depression. He knows what it's like not to have security. And now God's going to make his move. And David's not only going to have all that, he's going to provide all that for the Israelites, who he is king. So now we go into the Bible study. Thank you for being patient. David's heart. Second Samuel, now you're with me. Chapter 7, verse 2. And the king said to Nathan the prophet, See! See now. We have see now. He's like, <laughs> see now, what do you know? See now. We're in the couch. Life is comfortable. After years of prayer, we get to a point where life is comfortable. And that's not sin. But in that comfortable state, be thankful. But for God, I would have never gotten there. I'm not saying it's sin to have a comfortable couch. But I'm saying if you change and you say, I'm not leaving the comfortable couch to go get uncomfortable in the Lord's work again, then it is sin. Many people have walked away from Christianity because they don't like the work of Christianity. I get up five days a week early. Why do I have to get up early on Sunday morning to go to church? I'd rather stay at home. I had someone actually say that to me as a Christian. My retort was, so you'll get up for a buck, but not for Jesus? They don't like me no more. The couch can become our sin when we choose the couch over servanthood. Anybody say amen? Think about the fundraisers. And there's still work to be done, and we're going to have some um, cleanup times or other things in preparation for the next one coming up. But it takes a lot of work. I looked at the numbers this week. I'm astonished. It's about two to three times more brought in for missions and the like than I could ever imagine. And it's because so many people work so hard. Anybody say amen? 
And it'd be easy for us to relax and say we got there. But it'd be better for us to push forward and see how we can do the next one a little better. Anybody say amen? David has this prayer. He says, see now I dwell in a house of cedar. All of David's dreams have come true. He is the king. He's got a palace, how we would see it, made of cedar, the best of the best. And he has a heart's desire, and he goes to Nathan. Look at the initial response. But the ark of God dwells inside tent and curtains. Who wanted to build the temple? Then Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. Have you ever prayed and felt God told you yes, but found out that yes turns into a no? Have you ever had the couch and something happens with your health or your job or your finances or your family? And instead of being on the couch, you're on the grassy rocks praying and crying out to God for help. You see, just because we get to a point in life where it's comfortable doesn't mean we're going to stay there. One thing I know is things always change. But the attitude that I'm going to have gratitude, whether I'm on the couch or the cross, doesn't. I pray for you and myself. 7 through 13, 2 Samuel chapter 7, 4 through 13, what it's talking about is Nathan goes to God and God says to Nathan, no, David's not going to build. Go tell him no. I imagine that Nathan's like, but God, I already told him yes. Nathan, you spoke out of turn. The first thing is on Nathan's heart, he's got to go humble himself. So David, I told you this. But God now has revealed that the this is now a not this. So Nathan's got to humble himself. It would have been easy for Nathan. He says, well, I'm not going back. And David would have labored in vain. Nathan, being the man of God, goes right to David. That was probably very uncomfortable. It probably didn't found, feel like the couch at all. His cross was to go and say, God said no, and I told you wrong. But now we have to deal with the reality. See, sometimes we have to give bad news to good people we love. Anybody say amen? And that's what Nathan's called to do. This goes deeper than David. It goes to every one of us. Not every statement and not every word we tell others is going to be a positive word. But sometimes the best word we can give them is the truth. Amen? Because we can deal with the truth. And live in a well with God. Nathan goes back to David and says, no. You're not going to build it. In fact, God says, look at all he's done for you. Took you from the shepherd field. Gave you victory over Goliath. But for God, that spear would have hit you right in the heart. That's where Saul was aiming. But for God, you would have been caught so many times. You lived in the caves. You ran for your life. And God took care of you through all those uncomfortable years. My life, including yours, we have probably many uncomfortable years. And we can look back and pout and say how hard it was. Or we can look back and say God took care of me the whole time. And the same God that took care of me is the same God's taking care of me now. I'm so grateful to have a powerful God. I can look back and see before I even came to Christ, God was leading me down a road to bring me to that decision. Long before we ever knew it, God's hand was on our lives. His hand's on your life right now. Whether you're on your cross or you're on your own couch, I pray God's hand's on you and you can say, I, my God's a good God. He came to him and said, finally, you're not going to build that temple. But your seed will, your son will. And forever he'll be known as the one that God gave the favor. 
You see, sometimes the unanswered prayer is going to reveal what's in our heart when we don't get our way. People are watching, and how we respond matters. Verse 18, then King David went in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord God? I can imagine that conversation. Who am I that you have done all of this for me? Who am I that you would call me out of sin and show me there's a better life that leads to peace, not only with God, but within myself and give me a direction that I can have gratitude and thankfulness. Only you, God, who am I that you would bring healing to my soul, a forgiveness of sin, but a deep healing to find peace within myself and to find peace in life that so many people in the world cannot find? Who am I, Lord God, that you brought me here? Who am I, Lord God, that you brought me through all those trials and tribulations? So many times I look back where my life felt like it was on the cross and things wouldn't feel, uh, work out. But who am I, Lord God, that you worked it out? And I stand here today. Who am I, Lord God, to question you when you say no? Who am I, Lord God, to question the one who forms me? Who am I, Lord God? And what is my house? I have a house of cedar, but it's not a house of ultimate power. That's your house. I have a life on earth, but you have the life in heaven that's looking down upon me that controls my future. Who am I, Lord God, and what is my house? Should I expect you to always say yes? Should I expect my life never to have pain? Who am I, Lord God? Should I expect never to have a cross to carry? Who am I, Lord God? Who am I? And then all of a sudden we see where God's working where we couldn't even imagine. I never saw that one coming, God. Who am I to always expect a yes? Or sometimes you say no, and then I see a blessing I never saw. Can I share with you a blessing I had? Monday night, Jimmy and I talked about it a little bit. I came here to just be a positive part and of our fall festival. And I know a lot of people say you shouldn't do something on Halloween, but I share Jesus Christ. To me, it's about Jesus Christ. We started teaching martial arts again, and I know not everybody understands or may be in agreement, and that's okay. But there was this family that started coming that I don't know. And for three months now, I've shared scripture every Tuesday and every Thursday in prayer, in closing prayer. And I don't know where they really stand, but I know they're receptive. Tuesday night, the little boy was here. Somehow he heard there's a thing called a Jesus cube. And amongst of all the candy and people going around and in and out, he comes to me and says, Sensei Darrell, I said, yes, I want, a, I want a Jesus cube. I said, I'll be right back. In the middle of all the coming and going, I was on my knees sharing the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sins. And asked that boy, do you believe? And he said, yes. Anybody say amen? 
So God, you've said some no's in my life. And it wasn't comfortable. I just didn't see you had a better plan. Can anybody say amen? Monday night, I had a few families on my heart. That family was one of them. There was another family I spent 20 minutes talking to, encouraging, praying. There's another family I really wanted to go get to know them. And God allowed that to happen. I'm saying to all those that say you can't do something like that on Monday night. I went home praising God for the longest time. Anybody say amen? Who am I to say, God, when you say no, there's not something better. But now I want to show four steps, and I'll close the message, that we can take to be like King David with gratitude when the answer to our prayer is no. I like the comfy couch of yes, don't get me wrong, but my character will be shown when the uncomfortable times come when God says no. God just said no to David. Step number one, gratitude and accepting God's will. Gratitude and the no. Nevertheless, thy will be done, the words of Jesus Christ. Who am I, Lord God, and what is my house? that you have brought me this far. Has God ever brought you anywhere and out of anything? Anybody say amen? amen. So someone who about died on drugs one night and later car accidents should have been arrested for DUI, problems, family problems, alcoholism at home, the other home, my father's home, ends up becoming arrested in jail, my father, for crack, pulling him out of drug houses. And in all of that, look what God's done. Anybody say amen? amen. Maybe we should spend more time recounting all God's done for us and less time on the things maybe we didn't get a yes to. And yet this was a small thing in your sight, O oh Lord God. You brought me this far. And you've also spoken to your servant's house for a great while to come. My life's making a difference. And for a great while to come, David's saying, I don't see all the results yet, but it's because of you, God. How much more could a person ask for? O oh Lord God. Now what more can David say to you? For you, Lord God, Know your servant. God knows our heart. And the first step is to be thankful when God says no. When things don't go your way. It's hard to bury your hopes when God says no. And to carry your cross and that burden. And not understand. And it is hard. But you haven't seen the outcome yet. And God has. To be grateful is the key. I'm telling you right now, your life will change if you just start being grateful more often. Your life will change. Your marriage will change if you stop criticizing and be more grateful. Can anybody say amen? Nobody's saying amen, so your marriage will change. Your family will change. Your spirit will change. Too many people that are Christians walk around with a cloud all around them because they're so caught up in the negativity and they become very toxic. And they're toxic to the lives around them. And none of us are above do, making that mistake ourselves. And it's easy to get caught in that cycle with somebody. But we got to break that bond of a downward cycle and just say, hey, 
if we're going to talk, let's say 10 good things to every one bad thing. How about that? Second step, David was gratitude in his relationship. For you have made your people Israel your very own people forever. O oh, you, Lord, have become their God. God, through all the hard times, you have become my God and so close. I am so thankful for our relationship. I spend so much more time now just asking God to reveal himself. Reveal yourself in everything I'm doing. Reveal yourself in my dreams. Reveal yourself through visions. Reveal your presence. Reveal yourself in the woods. Reveal yourself at work. Reveal yourself in the community. Reveal yourself in what you're doing, Lord God. Reveal yourself in the scripture, Lord God, that I can see it and understand and go deeper than I ever have. Thank you, God, for a relationship. May it be more. Step number three, look at his promises. David says, and now, Lord God, you are God, and your words are true, and you have promised this goodness to your servant. God promises us goodness. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God promises us goodness. Four step in closing. Now, therefore, let it please you to bless the house of your servant that it may continue before you forever. For you, O Lord God, have spoken it, and with your blessings, that the house of your servant be blessed forever. What he is saying, this doesn't change my servanthood. God, I don't have to get in my way to be your servant. I will be your servant forever. Bless the house of your servant. You said no. And that's okay. Maybe God said no to you with something recently. Maybe your health. And you say, God, then, maybe my cross to carry is my health problems. And with my health problems, may your name be glorified, and I'll be your servant. Maybe it's your finances right now. Don't be short-sighted. Many people are making struggling decisions on their finances as Christians. Over the last year, their budgets are tighter than ever. I've talked to people who are making some balancing acts that they no longer get this that they kind of need so they could have that that they really need. Maybe that's your cross to carry for now. But in your struggle, you're going to be a servant of the Lord God. Maybe your cross is, your marriage isn't where you want it, where you hoped it would be. Be so easy to spit and quit. But you know that's not God's will. God's will is to go do the hard work to regain oneness that your marriage will be blessed. To fix the issue. Maybe you just need to carry that cross for a little bit. And don't give up. Sometimes the comfortable route. Isn't the best. The world around us is taken comfortable. Over Christian morality. 
because they don't want to pay the cost of making it right. But 10 years later, they're going to look back and realize what a mistake they made. The uncomfortable route is the better route. Thank you. Come to right center. Would you please stand? And I will start the invitation from the altar. I'll be up front in a minute, but Frankie is there to pray with you. I'm asking you, what is keeping you from being the servant God calls you to be? I'm asking you, what is keeping you from being the thankful servant of gratitude? Maybe it starts with your spouse. Maybe it starts when you leave church today. There's someone that you haven't thanked for serving. Maybe it goes to your children and you thank them for all the good they're doing. Maybe you've just gotten to a habit of saying all the negative and not saying blessings Amen. and articulating the Amen. good. Maybe it's time to just start being more grateful. Maybe it's time you turn to God and start praising Him for everything you have. What's keeping you back? As the time. pastor was preaching, I'm going to share a testimony about the sermon. What's your takeaway today? I didn't understand it. Couldn't follow him. That's your takeaway? Fell asleep? Bored? Rather be somewhere else? I want to share with you, I don't care who preaches or who teaches, who sings, you can get something out of anything done in the name of the Lord. And I got an ARPS, and I want to give you a testimony because he put me on the couch today. He knows about it. Four weeks ago, I took all the stuff that Cindy sent me. I'm tired of doing sponsorships in this church. I'm tired of burning my gas. I'm fretful with, you know what? Let somebody else do this. There are younger people who need to step up. So the A is assignment. That was the first step. Your church believes in you. They assigned you a job. You gonna bail out on why not? I could be flounder fishing. I got a nice couch like that at home. I don't need to come out here. I don't need to keep seeing these people. The second was a relationship. How about my pastor? He depended on me. How about Mr. Ray? How about Cindy? She called you and said, you're going to do the sponsorships this year? Couldn't tell Cindy no. Assignment and relationship. He talked about relationships with God and you. The P was promised. He's promised if you obey him, he will bless you. And the S was servanthood. You're going to continue or you're going to give up? I got my little packet together. My wife put her little shaky hands on me, and she said, Lord, bless him. And I want to promise you, in two hours later, when this phone calls were being made, this sermon came full fruition. Not you. Not you. I, I know what the sponsorship program did because I kept up with it. I'm faithful to my Lord, and I'm faithful to these people who I believe in in this church. I'm faithful to this pastor, and I promise you, I am thankful this morning that God blessed our ministry and missions program because I said yes, and I didn't want to. I still don't want to. You know where I want to be? On that couch. I want to be on that couch with my remote control with a cup of coffee with hazelnut in it and a magazine and I can listen to this sermon on a screen. But if nobody else was touched this morning, I want to promise you that Old Testament lesson, Arps, I got me a sermon out of it. You can get what you want to out of this church because of what you bring into it. Your heart condition this morning is not depending on his message. It's depending on your response to his word. And I will pray with you, and he will too. But I had to give a testimony this morning, brother. I love the message. I thank you for who you are. And I thank you for supporting me and loving me. As the Lord leads and they sing, it's Thanksgiving. I won't be with you the next two Sundays. Don't, you don't have to 
hear me keep on preaching. You can go home and know when Dow finishes, it's over. But I'm coming back. And I'm going to continue. And it's not whether you like me or not or whether you tolerate me. It's because I believe this is my assignment. And I need reminding sometimes that you got an assignment. What's yours? Step in and follow him. Amen. Do what he tells you to do this morning. I want to give him praise and had to give a testimony. It's a joy to see you this morning. Let us bow our heads. I am grateful that Frankie testified. Had to. Father, bless each one here. Help us, Lord, to focus. Huh, Jesus. To be grateful as we go home. To be grateful to those in our life. Mm. To speak words that bring life and edification. Amen. Lord, lead us through a week of such gratefulness. Yes, Lord. That next week, prepare us, God, to have such gratefulness that displaces all grumpiness. That's good. Let us not be one stage, Amen. but many stages, that we can get rid of those negative parts that each one has, mm. that you will be glorified. I ask this all, Christ Amen. Jesus, in your Amen. powerful name.